10 days and let them give us pulse to eat and wash it to drink. Then the count turns his be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat and push, push of the king's meat, and thou sayest the deal with thy servants. So he consented cons to them in this manner, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melanie took, took away the portion of their meat and the wine wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. This verse, this verse shows that by separating yourself from crowds, not doing what others are doing, by not by dying and not eating the food of the idol worshippers, it proves them and shows that following God and committing to God show success. My second point will be from Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 17 to 23. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. They, they, were, they were desire the mercies of God, God heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows shall not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. <coughs> then, the, then the secret was revealed in, unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed, blessed the name of God forever, forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the time and the seasons and removes the king and set him, and set him up the king and giving wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them. And that, and that, that's no understanding. He revealed the deep things and he knoweth, knoweth what is in the darkness and the light that dwelleth with him. I thank these and pray thee. The O oh God, O oh God, God, God of my fathers, who and, who has and who has been given and given wisdom and might, and has made made known to unto me now what the desire of me, me. Thou hast now made known unto us the king's man. This shows that God will reveal his secrets to his people if you're faithful towards him and stay with him no matter what. <laughs> My third point will come from Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 24. Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to who answered these in this matter. If so, if it be so, our God, God who we serve, is, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us on his side, hand, O king. But if not, not it will be known unto the O king, that we that we, not, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, fury and the form of his visage, was channeled against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times, times more than it was than it was one two pieces. And he commanded the most high and mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to a cast, cast, cast them to a burning fire, to the burning fire, fire furnace.
It is. Oh. Then the men bound in their coats and their hose in, the, in their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the fiery burning furnace. Therefore the king, because of the king's commandment, was urgent and the furnace was exceeding hot. The flame of the fire slew, slew that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell to deep down of the midst of the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake, spake and said on his counselors, Did we not cast these three men went into the midst of the fire? They answered themselves to the king, True, O king. This shows that when you stand for God, he will stand for you and protect you during time of turbulence and struggling, as well as keeping you safe. Amen. Amen. And my three take-home points are, you should dare to be different. You shouldn't just do, do something because everyone else in the crowd is doing it. Amen. You shouldn't just like commit sins because yeah. you saw like three people doing it over there, for example. My second point is, the key to success is God, and He will always reveal secrets to hit you. Oh, unless you, as long as you're faithful. Amen. As long as you're staying with God, He will reveal what you need to know to you. Amen. Okay. My third and final point is that God will always stand with you during troubles if you stand with Him. For example, the way Shadrach, Mishael, and the Bengal were in the fire, God was with them, protecting them. Protecting them, make sure they're safe because they stood with him. Daniel was a, by the king's standards, good looking, skillful, wise, and knowledgeable, mm. as well as being faithful. Mm. So, uh, and his background, where was he from? Uh, uh, was he one of the sons of the prophet? How did he end up in the Babylon in the first place? The king was looking for a wise man, and then he, him and Shadrach, Michel, and Ezekiel fell under the standards he was looking for exactly. Uh, and you were telling us about uh, certain things that uh, these four children uh, decided to do. They, they said they will not eat uh, the food. I mean, food is good. Children, is food good? Yes. Yeah. 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 So why, why would some children decide to eat only vegetables and not eat meat? Because the meat and wine were food of the idol worshippers and blessed under those idols. So, so when we eat things that are meant for idols, what was that? Uh, or, 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 so that thing they did, the same thing they decided to stand for God and not to compromise themselves. Is that what you're saying, Pastor? Yes, they did stand for God by not eating the food. And so what would be your advice for young children? Stand for God, don't just follow the crowd. But it really touched me uh, because he was talking about secrets. He was talking about the king had a dream, and the king the, was trying to find. In fact, I think Daniel did something there. Can you please throw more light? Was he the, was he Daniel that saved the wise men, or what would have happened to them? The wise men would have been killed because the king was, king was having a dream which was troubling him, and none of the wise men who weren't Daniel couldn't figure it out until Daniel tried made an appointment with the king to tell them what God has told them. So that means by standing for God, we can actually be also a source of blessing to other people. Is that correct? Yes. Because if Daniel, I'm, I'm just thinking, if Daniel was there, 
all those wise men would have been killed. Yeah. And so it, it wasn't something for God, it was actually not for Daniel's benefit alone, but he became a savior. You know, one of my friends in Nigeria used to say children are saviors. And I think, uh, I'm getting that. Are you a savior? Yes. You being a savior to your, to your generation. Now, now, the last point, Pastor, before I leave you to go, God bless you. Uh, the, you, you, you the, the church story there, I mean, fire. Fire is something dangerous. Can, can you just imagine yourself, Pastor, if you're the one that is to be trained to that fire, what happened? I'd probably die. <laughs> about the bravery of these three Hebrew boys, you know, uh, and they, they dare, because I, when we were reading there, I think I saw something that said, we said, we are not careful to answer you, O king. If we, even if God that we serve, we not save us, we would rather die. Well, what does that teach us? To stand for God no matter what. Stay with the faith. Stay faithful to work God no matter what. Hallelujah. <laughs> And then we're going to pray for our children. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to come on the road here, come on the road here. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. I want us to just stretch both our hands to the children. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is upon you, it's been this Hallelujah. Just stand for your hand and begin to proclaim God's blessing upon them. The Bible says, the children God has given to us are for signs and for wonders. Let's begin to prophesy into your life that these ones will be for signs and for wonders. You know that story that we read, that, 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 that we read about Daniel is an important story. It talks about people who decide to stand for God, who refuse to compromise. Everything around them in the world that they were living in, the people were, I mean, it would have been a, like an opportunity that the king selected you and the king decided to feed you while others are slaves. For these, that, I mean, these three or four children, they decide to stand for God. Let's pray for that our own children will not compromise. You know, everyone, everything is going on. So many messages, so many things. Uh, you know, information there outside that can actually get them discouraged and get them great that can, that can even, uh, you know, uh, mess up their understanding. How do you say I have two daddies? How do, how do they understand that they have two mommies? You know, all kind of things going on in the, in the society that make that happen with a mess of their understanding. Let's just pray that the hand of the Lord will be upon our children. The hand of the Lord will be upon our children. The hand of the Lord will be upon our children, that they will be for signs, they will be for wonders, in the name of Jesus, that they will not be wavered. You know, one of the prayer points that uh, one of them led this morning is that we should pray for all children that will be examples of believers. Listen to me, this is the form, this is the future of the church. You look at the United Kingdom, you see churches closing down, it's because they did not take time to invest in their children. And over time, when the adults, when the older ones grew old and they died, there was nobody to replace them. Let's pray for our own children. That they, they are fit to be planted in the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you. And if you are here this morning, you believe in God for children, why don't you use this as a point of contact and say, Lord, you will yet bless me. You will yet make my quiver to be full. In the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah.
presence of the Almighty. Yeah. I pray that future shall be bright Glory. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I proclaim the spirit of excellence yeah. that was upon yeah. that will come upon his children in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our children will grow in status. Yeah. They will grow yeah. in the knowledge of the Lord yeah. and the wisdom of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our children shall be champions in the name yeah. of Jesus. There will be a royal priesthood in the name of Jesus. There will be a royal diet in the hands of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Their future shall not be thwarted in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill your destiny. Yes, yes. Your going out and your coming in shall be blessed in the name of Jesus.
there was no issue at all. And God was we asked Him to uphold it, and He answered our prayer. So what we have come to do this morning, Father, is to just say thank you. Thank you for what you have started, and thank you for the future that is bright. You know, we sang that song. We say it's colorful, it's bright, and as we get there, we we thank you for the future of this world. And your hand will be upon it, and your name will be glorified. We just want to say thank you, Father. And every other part of the program, the white wedding is coming, so many other things will come into place. We just ask that you will take over this program, Lord, and you will, you will just walk through it because and give us substance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just join us in of contact for as many people that have believed in you for this type of thing. Lord, you will answer them speedily. Bless them. 
and we bless them. We will bless them. Everything that we lay their hand upon will prosper in the name of Jesus. No one comes to the presence of God and go back the same. Let's pray that the Lord of heaven will give them a blessing, a specific blessing. We were here on Friday praying, and we said one of the things that made the prayer of Daniel different it was because there was a specific request. He was, he was asking God to send the rain. So let's pray for that rain of abundance. The Lord, let there be abundance, abundance of God's blessing upon them, upon their work, upon whatever they do, upon the thing they lay their hand upon in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just pray for you this morning that the Lord will bless you. He will bless your work and your coming in. He will increase you on every side in the mighty name of Jesus. When others are saved, they say, cast it down for you that shall be lifted. And when next we hear from you, it shall be tremendous of joy. Or you want to do it after the service? After the service? Yeah, don't be your thing. All right, so please don't be in a hurry. Enjoy. I'm not speaking for you. Maybe I'm talking for the kids. All right. Uh, some of us went to Joyce. Joyce. No, Joyce House. That's a great Yeah, we went to Joyce House yesterday. The man, he gave me a cool sled. I we had fun. Our pastor was eating yesterday, you know, Pastor Toby. <laughs> and I saw Pastor Kari of the first leg. And when he put it down, he gave it the second one. I said, ah, he said, she is Auntie John with the dish. So don't be so, no, in a hurry. Auntie John has brought some of you that were not there yesterday. She has brought some stuff to church so you get some, uh, some food to go with you. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's come to our food as we share the grace and fellowship. And we will celebrate the children of the Lord. And I will be like the Thank you. 